It's been a hot minute since the last time we were able to pile bunker an enemy mech in the face, but the team at From Software has finally returned to their roots with Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. It's clear that it's a very different company in 2023 than in 2013 in that Armored Core 6 certainly looks and feels the part of a modern mecha action game, with gorgeous visuals, a rock solid 60 FPS frame rate that never falters, and an intuitive control scheme that dramatically reduces the learning curve experienced in prior Armored Core games. At the same time, its story and a few elements of its design feel a bit stuck in their old ways, with bland mission briefings still doing most of the heavy lifting as far as storytelling goes. But Armored Core 6 scores direct hits in the spots it matters most. Specifically, the highly customizable, intense, and frantic mecha battles. You ready to climb the wall? If there's one area where Armored Core 6 could have benefited from more modernization, it's in its storytelling. The five chapter campaign plays out almost entirely over radio conversations, PowerPoint presentation style mission briefings, and combat chatter that is nearly impossible to pay attention to while you're fighting for your life on the mining planet of Rubicon. It doesn't help either that our character is a blank slate who just does whatever they're told, fighting on behalf of corporations, resistance forces, arms dealers, or the enigmatic Walter and his own personal agenda. Time to get to work, 621. As a result, despite an interesting setting and premise with plenty of teases of ulterior motives and questionable loyalties, I found it really hard to connect with the story on anything beyond a pure surface level. Which is a shame, because one of the major ideas of Armored Core 6 is a branching storyline that has you making decisions on which faction you want to take on missions for. I just didn't really care one way or the other. However, one of the benefits of this mission structure is that it's able to allow for a wide variety of objectives that each favor a different style of play, which then feeds into the excellent customization elements that make up the heart of Armored Core 6. Before you sortie into a mission, you're able to equip your mech with four weapons, one for each arm and one attached to each shoulder, a unique head, body, arms, legs, generator, booster, and a fire control system. And, oh boy, there are a ton of different factors to consider beyond simply what to spend your limited money on. The external parts of your mech all have their own weight, defensive value, AP, and what's known as attitude stability, which affects how quickly you get staggered from consecutive hits. Parts with higher defensive stats naturally weigh a lot more and require sturdier but slower leg parts in order to carry the burden. And weapons that weigh a lot require larger, stronger, and heavier arm parts. But that's not all. Certain weapons also take a ton of energy to wield and thus require generators that have large energy capacities in order to even equip them. But then you have to balance that with the fact that your energy regeneration could suffer, which means that energy management gets much more difficult once you're actually in the mission. Before you even start making those decisions, you should consider what range you can expect your mech to be fighting at so you can optimize your internal parts for that role, and the list just goes on and on. That may sound like a lot, and I'm not gonna lie, it is. But still, I felt like Armored Core 6 did a great job of guiding me with its sorting tools and descriptive text, which made it easy enough for me to discern what parts were good for what. As long as I had the idea in my head of what kind of mech I wanted to make, it was fairly easy to bring that idea to life. Over the course of the campaign, I piloted a lightweight scout with fast boosts that excelled at evasion, a medium-sized destroyer that could wield heavier weaponry without sacrificing too much mobility, and a mobile fortress outfitted with the heaviest and most devastating weapons money could buy. What all of this customization amounts to is making every mission feel like a satisfying combat puzzle. Even though there are certainly loadouts that felt stronger than others, hello dual kinetic shotguns on a medium-sized bipedal mech, there was never a one-size-fits-all solution to every mission, which is a testament to the stellar design and variety of the missions themselves. You'll never do the same thing twice. One mission had me investigating a seemingly abandoned outpost, only to be ambushed by stealth ACs I needed to scan in order to target. Another had me dropping down into an underground facility, carefully descending from platform to platform so as to avoid getting disintegrated by the laser cannon at the bottom. And another still had me infiltrating a cave to destroy a generator, which I did, and then had to book it out of there to avoid getting caught up in the resulting explosion. It kept the action fresh throughout the entirety of the 15-hour campaign and beyond. Failing missions is part of the process, and it's something that will very likely happen to you a lot. 
But fortunately, the checkpoint system is fairly generous, and you're given an opportunity to change the assembly of your mech after every death. This made it so that every failure came with an opportunity to assess what went wrong and think about how I could fix it. Coming back with the right answer, whether that was simply by switching out my weapon, or a more drastic revamp involving changing up my AC archetype, was always satisfying. That said, I really, really wish that you could also access the shop as well when you die. If you don't already have the thing that you need to beat whatever you're stuck on, you have to back out of the mission, buy it, and then restart the mission from the beginning. One of the things that I appreciated right out of the gate in Armored Core 6 is that I was able to pick up the controls extremely quickly. It's all super intuitive. Right and left triggers fire your right arm and left arm weapons. Right and left bumpers fire your right and left shoulder weapons. X jumps, square dodges, circle toggles your booster jets. Clicking in the left stick makes you go into a sprint like assault burst mode. And clicking in the right stick changes your lock on mode. I've seen a lot of discussion from longtime Armored Core fans who are not happy about there being a hard lock-on system, with the argument that it lowers the skill ceiling. But I think From Software has found a really delicate balance with it. If you turn on the targeting assist mode, you gain the advantage of keeping the camera fixed on a specific target, but you're less accurate with your shots. As a result, I found myself switching between the two modes frequently, using the targeting assist mode so I wouldn't lose track of a fast-moving boss and then switching it off and manually keeping it in my sights when I felt like it was time to counterattack. Having the hard lock also allows for some really dynamic and intense boss fights that would have been much more frustrating to deal with if I didn't have a way to always keep the boss in my sights. More than anything though, combat in Armored Core 6 just feels good. The wide assortment of weapons all feel satisfying in their own way, whether that's using a charge shot from a linear rifle on an unaware enemy to kill them in one shot, Unaffiliated AC. nimbly dashing around with dual shotguns and laying waste to a whole military base, or juggling quad rocket launchers between your arms and shoulders. Things can feel downright anime-like at times with how many missiles you're able to fire at once, and how many missiles get fired at you. In addition to the regular missions, there's an arena mode that pits you against steadily increasingly difficult one-on-one -on -one fights against named ACs, each with their own unique loadout and assembly. You'll definitely want to go through them too, as completing arena fights rewards you with currency you can use to strengthen your mech and further customize your playstyle. You can increase your damage with a specific type of weapon, increase your defense, unlock core abilities like a super satisfying kick out of your assault boost, and much more. Better still, you can respec at any point for a fairly modest fee. If you want to test your arena skills against actual humans, you can do that as well, in both one-on-one -on -one and three-on-three -on -three online matches. I didn't get to test out the netcode extensively in my review period, but the few matches that I did play were super smooth and a ton of fun. And of course, if cosmetic customization is your thing, there's a ton of options to paint your mech whatever color combination you desire, place a variety of decals you unlock through arena fights, create your own custom decals, then save and share your creation for the rest of the world. Beating Fires of Rubicon's campaign unlocks a new game plus mode that allows you to take all of your unlocked parts through the story missions again from the very beginning. There's also a lot of incentive to play through New Game Plus in the form of multiple endings, new story branching points, entirely new and more difficult missions, and even a whole new set of arena matches to fight through. Needless to say, you'll definitely want to go through this more than once to get everything that AC6 has to offer. AP Armored Core 6 doesn't look to reinvent the bipedal legs of the mech action genre, but it does update, refine, and polish them to an aggressive shine. Every sortie is a satisfying combat puzzle to solve thanks to fantastic mission design, intense boss encounters, and extremely wide assortment of weapons and parts that can dramatically affect how your mech plays, and excellent, explosive combat that manages to take very complex systems and mechanics and make them easy to understand and execute. Its interesting premise is stifled by bland storytelling told through mission briefings and radio chatter, but this is still, nonetheless, a welcome return of a classic mecha series. For more Armored Core 6, make sure to check out the first minutes of the game. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.